it's no point to try to follow him and then try to overtake him and end up the strike because obviously he's not going to give me a room. It's correct. Yeah. Spa, equivalent with speed and power. It's home to some of the best moments in Formula One history, as well as some tragic ones. Over the course of the video, we'll talk about some things to look out for during the race, the storylines headed into Spa, and then the circuit itself, as well as the predictions. Make sure to stick around to the end, and I'll tell you how to play along. For the seventh round of the 2020 championships, the grid hits the longest track on the calendar. And it's a pretty bold way to start a triple header that goes to Italy in the next two consecutive races. A true driver's track, Spa has only been won by a non-world champion on three occasions in the past two decades. And two of those are pending as Ricardo and Leclerc are still active. And heading into Spa, Hamilton will want to make sure that that champion advantage favors him as well. But a win at Spa is statistically unlikely for the six-time world champion. He's only managed to do it once since his title stumble in 2016, so that's 25% win rate. And of all the tracks on the grid that he's raced at consistently, Spa is his worst. He's managed to DNF four out of 13 times here. That's over the course of McLaren and Mercedes. Spa is no friend to either era, as Botas himself has only managed to touch the podium on two occasions in his entire career. Red Bull's Max Verstappen will likely be the best challenge to the Arrows, as he's shown great pace over one lap over a variety of circuits in 2020. But the young Dutchman will be hungry for Spa glory, as his incident with Kimi Raikkonen last year removed himself from the race on the opening turn. An unrelenting racing point will also look the challenge for an outside podium. Recovering from their 15-point deduction in the championship split between both of the drivers, as well as their fine of 400000 the peak Mercedes is back on track and in the clear, for now. Surprising results here aren't foreign to Racing Point either. The then Force India pair of Esteban Ocon and Sergio Perez locked out the second row. Given their form and the car seems to be on the up, I expect strong results from both of them. Alternatively, McLaren is coming off a pretty dreadful spa from last year. The 2019 Belgian Grand Prix was bookended by the Tangerine cars losing powers in pretty dramatic fashion if you remember. To refresh your memory, Carlos was panicking to get a grip of his lack of power just as he approaches the grid box. He'd end up sputtering off the line only to officially retire without finishing a single lap. While Carlos would barely get that one lap under his belt, Lando Norris would run well until one lap was remaining. His car would kick into anti-stall just after he crossed the control line for the final lap. Keep going, keep going for now, keep I going. I can't, it's broken! It's broken! Anti-stall! It's I'm off. A gutting turn of events for sure for a rookie who was on pace to get a whole heap of points. All vanished. But as was the case with his rookie season, just one of spectacularly poor luck, race after race. And it's no surprise why he's actually in front of Carlos Sainz this season, and why I predicted as such, and it was one of my most mocked predictions of all the ones I set last year. That and along with Kimi being P18. Didn't hear the end of that. How does that look now? But I'll be talking more about that 2019 season by both of the McLaren pair very, very soon, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled. And now, let's talk a little bit about the circuit. The Beast in Belgium is a favorite of many due to the varying characteristics across the track, running north of 7 kilometers as it meanders left 10 times and right 9. There are sweeping corners as well as long flat-out spots. The all-important middle sector, that's the one that makes up the majority of the time on track. Toto Wolff would go on to say, It's an iconic track and one of the fan favorites, but finding the right setup can be difficult because of the variety of characteristics. On the one hand, you want as little drag as possible on the long straights, but on the other hand, you need a certain level of downforce to be quick through the corners. The track is also unkind to tires. This race in 2020 will really be no exception. Given the surprise we've had with the Pirelli rubber, it may be surprising to see the nomination of the C2, C3, and C4 boots. This is a step softer than we had in Barcelona, as well as the selected Pirellis from 2019 from Spa. But remember, this is a response to last year's event, which saw zero uses of the C1 hardest grade, with 70% of points finishers opting for a one-stop strategy. You can't say Pirelli aren't trying to make things interesting. And it's not just Pirelli. Michelin, Bridgestone, and Pirelli, all three manufacturers have had trouble here. You've got the high lateral loads from that sector too, and to make matters even worse, it's a pretty abrasive track. And if you think back a while ago to whenever it came out that Pirelli said that the teams had rejected their compounds, I told you that this might be a problem. And Spa is going to be another instance of that. And for those of you out there who like a race full of rain, well, you might be in luck, as of right now, time of recording, that there will be some rain, at least spotty, during the race. And this will surely only add to the drama, as we're now with a tire that's going to be exponentially degrading, with softer rubber, over the course of a track that requires 70% full throttle. It's going to be interesting. And now let's talk about the championship as it stands right now. Hamilton sits in dominant position on 132 points, enjoying a 37-point margin on Verstappen, who leapfrogged the second Merck of Botas thanks to his stellar podium capture rate this year. Behind the leaders, six points separates four drivers. This includes the penalized racing points as well as last year's spa winner in Charles Leclerc. 
He happens to be leading the herd with 45 points, hunted closely by both Stroll and Albon, who are deadlocked at 40 points each. Alex Albon in particular may be on for a pretty big Sunday. This Sunday will represent his one-year anniversary, where he was actually promoted to Red Bull, and in that race, he was brilliant. Norris trails the tied pair by a single point at 39. Perez, Saints, and Ricardo round out the top 10. The FIA issuance of the Quali Mode ban is set to hit the grid next week. This is the last time that the teams are going to be able to use that one lap party mode. And Mercedes definitely took advantage of that. Hamilton in particular was spectacular. Today's Quali session only made things that much more interesting. Hamilton would set the track record twice on his way to his sixth pole at Spa. Verstappen keeps his hopes alive for what's going to be the closest thing he can possibly get to a home race, as he and both of the Mercedes are the only cars in the front runner starting in the points that are going to be on the medium compounds. And Verstappen's not even that far off. He's only a single 100th off the front row behind Valtteri Bottas. And just because Verstappen's hunting doesn't mean he's not being hunted. That turn one will not be a cakewalk for anyone. Ricardo will join Verstappen on the second row as he splits the Red Bull duo. Ferrari continued to slip down in the ranks as they showed that their form wasn't any better. In the FP3 session, they were actually down at the bottom of the grid, with Vettel being dead last. And while they both made it out of Q1 for the qualifying session this time, neither driver really had a shot to make it into Q3. And now finally, let's talk about the predictions. After that qualifying session, I'm pretty comfortable predicting Hamilton to win this race. But considering Verstappen made it to the second row on the same tire compounds as Valtteri, I'm not confident that Valtteri will be able to hold off the Dutchman. Valtteri's efforts will be good enough for a podium on the weekend of his 31st birthday, but Verstappen will split them in P2. Another thing to watch for in this race is going to be a shootout of the midfield teams. Renault in particular look to have the numbers of both McLaren and Racing Point, but this is Saturday. We still have to see what's going to happen when it comes time for race trim, so let's hope that F1 is showing the midfield battles because it's going to be a good one. And my surprise performer of the day is going to be Daniel Kvyat. He'll be starting just outside of the points and having a choice of tires. And if he's smart, he'll pick a contra strategy, as he was on for a pretty good result last year. In the rest of the starting grid, barring any penalties, you have Alex Albon in P5, Ocon, Saints, and Perez in 6, 7, and 8, Lance Stroll of Racing Point in P9, with Lando Norris in P10. On top of the midfield battles we have going on, make sure to watch out the teammate battles. Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel are starting P13 and P14. Make sure to also keep your eyes peeled for the Alpha Tauris of Daniel Kvyat and Pierre Gasly. And as I included in my prediction write-up, I also see George Russell having a bit of a surprise performance as well, beating a couple of drivers on merit. And this was confirmed in qualifying, as he made it through to the Q2 session. As such, I maintain that prediction. I think as his confidence grows, he's going to continue to show that he has the pace to be in a better car. Let's hope that he gets one. And that's it. You got the predictions for the points. You got a little bit about the circuit, some history, and everything going in. If you like this kind of video, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. And make sure to play along if you like this idea of a prediction challenge. And as the channel continues to grow, I want to make sure to invest it all back into you. Make sure your experience is the best it can be, and I think that this is a cool way to do it. But that's all I've got for now. Thanks for your time, and I'll see you very, very soon.